Good evening. Welcome to the Peoria City Council meeting for Tuesday, April 9th. Would you please rise, uh, observe a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance led by Council Member Leone. Thank you. With the clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Barrett. Here. Vice Mayor Rivero. Here. Councilmember Ames. Here. Councilmember Patena. Here. Councilmember Edwards. Here. Councilmember Carlot. Here. And Councilmember Leone. Here. Thank you. This is the final call to submit speaker request forms. The speaker request forms can be found in the lobby. Fill them out. Give them to the clerk. We will call upon you at the appropriate time. Uh, first two, first three items up for presentations. Uh, Mr. Leone, would you join me down front? Thanks, I know they're just dying to hear what I have to say. The, the first items uh, are two awards for members of the uh, Peoria Diamond Club, and I will allow Mr. Leone to address this. Thank you, yeah, these two awards are for the captains for 20 years as volunteers for the Diamond Club. And we're here tonight to congratulate them, and we want to give them an award. They do such great work. Everybody in the Diamond Club, all the volunteers, a great job, and I am real proud of them. I don't know how many uh, volunteers are here today for the Diamond Club, but I know Benedetto over there he does a great job with the people. So you want to uh, have something to say? Yeah, I'm here. You should be doing all the talking. Okay, the first award is the Bill Sandvig. And the second award is I'm going to take a few seconds here for, for the, to plug the Diamond Club. These, these ladies and gentlemen spend essentially the month of March out there at the stadium. Those are the folks that stand there in the sun and point to where you should park, sell you the programs, and check your tickets and everything else. What they do is the money they earn for doing all of this, they then turn around and put it into children's sports. Uh, and they do a wonderful job. It is a great, great uh, charity group, and they support. And one of the things they get out of doing all this is they get the use of the stadium for a couple of nights a year. And to show you what kind of an organization they are, they donate one of those nights back to Relay for Life, which is the American Cancer Society fundraiser. And all that money stays in, this, in the state of Arizona. So the, the Diamond Club is a wonderful organization. Please give them a hand. The second award is Leonard Lisk. You know, I, I worked for Lenny for, well, I volunteered with Lenny for about, what, 15 years? And he worked me to death, believe me. <laughs> Congratulations, Lenny. Lots of luck to you. Thank you. The second item uh, is a proclamation from the city of Peoria. A proclamation whereas our community has a number of individuals friends, neighbors, community volunteers, and so many others who are organ and tissue transplant recipients who would quite possibly not be alive today had it not been for the compassionate generosity of well, 
informed organ donors and their families. And whereas these compassionate organ donors and their families understood the importance of human organ and tissue donation and further recognized the urgent need for organ donors in order to stem the rise of the 19 needless deaths that occur each day in the United States due to a lack of life-saving organs. And whereas the need for organ donor registrants has never been greater evidenced by the fact that in 2008, the number of people on the national organ transplant list waiting for a life-saving organ has exceeded the 100,000 mark for the first time in history. And whereas over the years, the problem has been exacerbated because of confusion as a result of the many changes in the methods of registering organ donors. Consequently, many of our citizens believe that they are registered organ donors, when in fact, they may no longer be a registered organ donor. Additionally, we need to inform our winter visitors that even though that they are registered in their home state, if they winter in Arizona, they should also register in Arizona. It only takes less than three minutes to do. And whereas the best way we can honor the memory of the courageous organ donors that have gone before us is to follow their civic example and donate life by properly registering as organ donors, thereby giving fellow citizens in need of a second chance in life. Now, therefore, I, Bob Barrett, Mayor of the City of Peoria, do hereby proclaim the week of April 14th through 20th, 2013, as Donate Life Registration Week. And I have uh, Mr. Burku, if you would step up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, uh, Council and fellow citizens. I'd like to give the city uh, three flags that we might be able to ha fly below our Peoria flag for the week and kind of as a reminder or designated week that you've declared. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And Mayor, if you could stay for a second and join us. Uh, Mayor and Council, one of the things that the Neighborhood Livability Team has been looking at recently is how to get more members of our community involved in the efforts of the Neighborhood Livability Team. So one of the things we did recently is the members of the Neighborhood Livability Team came up with a drawing contest, and we included some of our AM, PM kids, and they came up with some outstanding drawings that we're now going to present awards for this evening. So our third place winner, who's a fourth grade student at Paseo Verde Elementary School, is Jenna Faus. And that's Jenna's drawing behind you. Congratulations, Jenna. And you are receiving a $25 movie gift card and free popcorn. Mom and Dad, you folks want to come up? Are, are you going to claim your child? <laughs> the drawing is actually pretty good. Our second place winner is a fifth grade student, also from Paseo Verde Elementary School, and it's Amanda Durazo. <laughs> Amanda's also receiving a $25 movie gift card and free popcorn. And our grand prize winner, and if you look at that drawing, that is an absolutely beautiful drawing, is a fourth grade student from Lake Pleasant Elementary School, Abby Delores.
Abby and her family actually won a family four pack to a spring training game that also included food and Abby's drawing will be used as one of the logos for the neighborhood livability team. And also, before I sit down, if I could have the other members of the Neighborhood Livability team, please stand up. They really worked very hard on this project, and I think they did also deserve a round of applause. Thank you, folks, very much. Thank you. Next item up is the consent agenda. The consent agenda are all items that are listed with the C. They're considered to be routine. They've been previously reviewed by the city council. They'll be enacted by one motion unless the council member asks for an item to be removed. Mr. Rivero. Thank you, Ma Thank you, Mayor. I would like to remove item 10C for a brief uh, staff presentation. Item 10C. Any other requests? Seeing none, could I have a motion? Moved by Mr. Uh, Edwards, seconded by Mr. Leone. This is the consent agenda. There are items 7C through 16C, with the exception of 10C. Please vote. The clerk will record the vote. Who's short? It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Next item is 10C, Notice of Intention, Water Rate Adjustment, Established Public Hearing Day. Our Chief Financial Officer, uh, Brent Mattingly, will give a brief overview of this item. Uh, thank you. Council, uh, Arizona Revised Statutes outlines a series of steps that a city must follow if you're considering any increases to utility rates. The first step is the item before you this evening, which is adopting a Notice of Intention and that simply informs the public that at least 30 days in the future, there will be a public hearing on this matter before council takes formal action. Once that notice of intention is adopted, we publish that in a newspaper. Uh, and then on that date, which we're proposing to be May 21st, the city council would actually hold a public hearing on this topic. If the council wished to increase any utility rate at that time, then the council would discuss those rates and make their decision at that public hearing. And then if you were to make a decision adjusting utility rates, we must wait at least 30 days before we would actually implement those rates. So there is no council action this evening on the rates themselves. It's simply taking that first step, setting a date for the public hearing. Uh, your council st budget study session coming up later this week on April 12th. You're going to be actually one of the topics before you is utility rates. Uh, again, further discussion would occur and that public hearing could occur on May 21st uh, pending your action that evening. The rates, any increases to utility rates could then go in effect in July along with the new adopted budget. Thank you. Questions or comments? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. No questions? Could I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Rivero, second by Mr. Edwards. This is 10C. Notice of intention, water rate adjustment, establish public hearing date. Please vote. The clerk will record the vote. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. That moves us on to the regular agenda, 17R, Land Lease, Arizona Broadway Theater. Uh, Deputy City Manager. Jeff Tyne will introduce this item. Thank you, Mayor and Council. The item before you is to seek direction regarding the land lease with Kloss Enterprises in association with Arizona Broadway Theater. Uh, just give you a quick recap uh, uh, regarding the arrangement that the city has with Arizona Broadway Theater. Uh, a little background, the Arizona Broadway Theater is located on four acres of land at 7701 West Paradise Lane. It is uh, city-owned land. 
Uh, Arizona Broadway Theater has some quick background. It is a privately owned theater on the city land. Uh, the Broadway Theater is a combined profit and not-for-profit operation uh, where the not-for-profit portion, which we term ABT, manages the facility uh, where Kloss Enterprises holds the underlying mortgage and also uh, pays the debt service on the facility itself uh, along in co coordination with their two financing institutions which have what we call leasehold interest on that uh, facility. Uh, Kloss Enterprises is also the lessee to the city of Peoria for the land, uh, so pays any uh, lease payments in regard to that. Uh, and the Enterprises also runs the concession and food service as well. The lease payment schedule, uh, originally the terms in 2003 were to have a lease payment schedule to the city of 48 cents per square foot minimum rate. Uh, that resulted in an average of about $2.4 million scheduled over the initial lease term. Uh, since that time, in 2007, there was a significant amendment which actually lowered the reduced the overall lease amount by 35%, deferred the payments for a period of time, and really uh, reflected the net present value of the lease would be collected over a period of time of $1.25 million. Uh, since that time, there's been a series of subsequent amendments that also had occurred uh, where those lease payments have been deferred. Uh, but the net present value, ultimately, what will be collected would, remains at $1.25 million. Uh, this item was discussed with uh, the City Council in March 2012 in a study session. Uh, at that time, some of the direction that was received was to adjust the lease payment schedule for uh, one year, uh, so deferring the payment for one uh, additional year, uh, and then in that time, evaluating the theater's financial position and really exploring some of the mutual interests that the city and Arizona Broadway Theater have uh, in developing a new arrangement and also looking at some different financing alternatives as well. And that's uh, some of the, uh, the efforts that we've undertaken here in the last year. Uh, just a quick summary then, as the terms stand right now, no rent payment scheduled through March 2013. Uh, at that point, it is a 25-year land lease at about approximately $6,000 a month that progresses uh, increasingly again to get to that net present value amount of $1.25 million. There are some extension options that are available and ultimately at the end of the lease, uh, the contract has for the building to come back to the city. So this is just a quick outline of the current structure uh, of lease payments as they're scheduled. And then some of the discussions that uh, city staff had with Arizona Broadway Theater staff included to look at a lot of different options for how we would approach going forward some of the financial terms. And that included continuing with the current terms that we have, looking at some type of discounted lease amount from what we have currently established, uh, all the way down to a dollar a year lease payment. Uh, maybe to look at different revenue streams, such as imposing surcharges to help offset uh, the cost for this lease. Uh, obviously, continuing to look at partnership opportunities in programming and in different activities, uh, maybe shared uses and the items like that. Um, even for the city to assume facilities and operations was on the table. But ultimately, uh, what was discussed, uh, especially as the, uh, we continued and progressed through the year, was uh, the opportunity for Arizona Broadway Theater to go toward what we call a pathway to ownership. And that would be where the Arizona Broadway Theater, the not-for-profit portion, would ultimately look to acquire the land, the underlying land that the city currently owns. This would be a companion uh, transaction along with uh, ABT looking to acquire the facility itself from Kloss Enterprises. This would, in essence, make Arizona Broadway Theater the entire entity, a not-for-profit operation where they would own both the facility and the land, would give them the ability to increase uh, some capital formation, uh, improve on some of the financing terms, and help to dictate their destiny. Uh, so with that, uh, a couple of options that we see going forward. Uh, one of those, uh, the, the council can see fit to continue with the current agreement, which again would collect approximately 1.25 million net present value over the life of the term and begin the payments uh, as soon as this month. Uh, also, the council can reduce the lease amount, uh, a consideration anywhere from a dollar a year or to some lesser amount, or ultimately, uh, the council can uh, direct staff to pursue a land sale with Arizona Broadway Theater, um, and we can enter into a, a period of time to have those negotiations. Uh, at this time, city staff is just going forward with the direction of continuing with the current agreement as it stands. Uh, with that, uh, that's the staff presentation. I'll address any other questions that you have. Okay, unless someone has a, a question 
specifically to this, I would like to call, call on the speakers first before we discuss it. Is that agreeable? Okay. First speaker is Kyle Kopecki. And I'm going to apologize in advance for mispronouncing everybody's name. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, tonight, I have a couple objectives that I want to um, address uh, this evening. Uh, first of all, I'm very overwhelmed by the, the show of support um, that we're able to have here tonight uh, to show how important it is, this particular item, and what it means to the community that I live in. Um, and I have two objectives that I hope to address tonight. One is I would like to find uh, a path where I might be able to uh, set the record straight and focus on some of the facts and um, dispel some of the um, myths and misunderstandings about how Kloss Enterprises operates as well as ABT. Um, and, the way, and if I can, if you'll oblige me um, and uh, give me an opportunity to address all these, um, I'd like to open it up in a very... Um, theatrical way. Now, I'm not going to act or dance around, but I'm going to look at it in, very, in three very simple ways. When an actor prepares, they can look at three simple questions. Who am I? What has happened? And what do I want? So I'm going to start by who am I? I'm Kyle Klopaki. I'm the executive producer of the Arizona Broadway Theater, a nonprofit charity recognized by the federal government as a charity, uh, 501c3. We seek donations. We are governed by a board of directors. Uh, we are fully audited and have full transparency as other nonprofit organizations. We're also a family. Um, my kids and my wife are right over here. Um, we are also patrons, volunteers, board members. We are the community of Peoria. We are very much entrenched in this community. It is very difficult to find ways to separate us. Um, the two organizations that we're dealing with, Kloss Enterprises, I can speak on behalf of Kloss Enterprises to some extent because I have a vested interest in Kloss Enterprises. Kloss Enterprises quite simply is the financier of the theater. When we laid out to build the Arizona Broadway Theater, um, some of you will remember, um, it, uh, it was required to have uh, fund development um, in the part of an private investors. We raised the funds. We sought private capital to raise and build the Arizona Broadway Theater. There was no taxpayer dollars that went into the building of the Arizona Broadway Theater. It was simply a cooperation to create this public-private partnership because we are on city land. And that development um, led to many years to us finally landing onto the lease. The other portion of this is ABT. ABT is a charity. Um, it has a mission. It has a vision for the future. It is separated from Kloss Enterprises. They are two separate entities, and I can address questions on either side of those to help um, gain in some clarity. So um, there are three items that I believe that are very critical to the agendas of the city of Peoria. One is an arts agenda and what we fill there for arts in the community, which is a vibrant arts community. One is a civic agenda. We are a meeting place. In fact, tonight, Peoria School District is having their annual um, event, uh, the Pride of Peoria, at the theater. So there would actually be more people here, I imagine, um, to support the initiatives that we're trying to face today. And there's also an economic development agenda, the recognition of the Arizona Broadway Theater as an economic generator for the city of Peoria, as estimated by the Americans for the Arts, that we are a $9.6 million enterprise within the city of Peoria. Um, we are also very transparent. Apparently, I'm sometimes too transparent. I give away all of our trade secrets, um, which there aren't many. Um, through this process, we have tried to show that ABT um, has full disclosure of all of our agreements. In fact, in this item here that we tried to put together for the council's consideration, it has the governing agreement between Kloss Enterprises and ABT. I encourage the council to read this to fully understand how the two companies are integrated. This information has been available um, previously. Um, also. Kloss Enterprises, any recognition of what Kloss Enterprises um, would be um, needing to disclose in terms of what it does operate? Kloss Enterprises, myself, my wife, and my parents. Um, we're all depicted on the mural in the lobby. So if you go to the lobby, you'll see us up there. That is Kloss Enterprises. There's plenty of information we'd be more than willing to share if it leads to the result where we can find a better way to shape the Arizona Broadway Theater in this community. So what has happened? I, um, Jeff Tyne has illustrated all the process that we've gone through so far, all the various lease amendments. Um, and, but there are a couple things that I would like to clarify. Um, there has been some misconceptions um, of what the theater represents. And over these years, we have asked for a deferment of the lease. That is very true. But the purpose of this is that we are asking the council not to impede our ability to fulfill the mission and serve the citizens as Arizona Broadway Theater. 
the nonprofit. If there is a ground lease, the ground lease is, in, is imposed on Kloss Enterprises, but that fee goes directly to ABT. ABT would have to pay any sort of extra surcharges or costs for operation as per the license agreement that you have before you. So I want to dispel some of those, that misinformation about what we're trying to do. We are not asking for taxpayers to give anything away. Um, we are not trying to ask for a taxpayer subsidy. Um, we are not asking that uh, uh, some words out there referencing that uh, somehow the city should have to pay to have this theater is absolute fallacy. Um, we are simply asking that we continue to operate in the way that we have without having any further impediments. Um, um, make it very clear that we are not asking for any, any money or any subsidy from the city at this time. Um, so. If there are questions regarding that, please, I encourage any of the council or staff to ask those questions openly whenever possible. We will try to address any of those concerns. I know Jeff had illustrated that um, the recommendations over the course of this past year in particular, the six items that we had that were in consideration in 2012, um, they were anywhere from the dollar a year to a modified lease maintain the lease the way it is, find a partnership opportunity where the city could use the facility in lieu of a, of a lease, find a way to sell or cede the land to ABT, or consider the city purchasing the building. Now, over the course of 2012, at the uh, recommendation of the city manager to look at a range of alternatives, um, was to address these. And we very quickly learned in our conversations with city staff that the interest in buying or coming up with a partnership between the theater and the city was not of their interest. So we sat down, all three parties, Kloss Enterprises, ABT, and the city, to try to figure out what it is that would be the best way to craft the future of the Arizona Broadway Theater. In those conversations, we had all parties present, and we identified what every particular organization wants. My board wants control. They want to be able to make uh, renovations on the facility, wants to find ways to refinance and reinvest in the mission of the Arizona Broadway Theater. Kloss Enterprises, quite simply, wants to pay off its debts and get out of town. Its purpose, once again, was to finance and build this entity. Now that it is built, it's trying to find a path to get out. And, AB and the city, of course, wants us all to succeed. We realized very quickly in our conversations that the best solution was for ABT to go alone. Now, in doing this, it was very complicated. I had to convince Kloss Enterprises to relinquish control over the building, and I had to find a way to convince the city that getting out of a ground lease or any sort of ownership on the land is in the best interest of the theater and the community. It was not easy. So we created a, a, a path to ownership of the theater. Um, we wanted to recognize everybody having skin in the game. I know that's sort of a, a flavor that we have out there, and we did recognize that. ABT is willing to make some renovations on the facility, launch into a capital campaign considering renovations of the Encore Room, which is the room behind the bar, because the community has dictated it needs a larger meeting space. So we're trying to figure out ways to do that. Kloss Enterprises is willing to sell the building to ABT below market, and we're asking a, the city to consider investing in the community and consider seeding the land, which is probably going to be a difficult thing to do, or find a way to sell it at a rate that is appropriate. So we've gone through, we created a resolution by the board. Um, Kloss Enterprises created a sales agreement. We proceeded moving forward. I started to meet with some of the council members that um, I hadn't had a chance to talk to previously and were per perhaps on the fence. Um, I met with uh, Council Member Rivero. Um, and he said that he was interested in the sales idea, wasn't entirely sure how to move forward on this, um, but, found, but suggested ways of helping determine the price. Met with Councillor Patena um, and discussed some of our back history. And I also met with uh, Councillor Edwards. Um, and he had suggested finding ways for us to move quickly, finding ways to get some payments to start soon. So it was my understanding, uh, and the perception I had was certainly the sale idea was definitely in the realm of possibilities drafted a sales purchase option that I presented to City, um, anticipated the ability to speak with the rest of the council. Um, however, it did go to executive session, which was denied, giving the appearance to me, um, because I'm, I'm not obviously familiar with the, the inner workings there, um, that the council was unwilling to work on a solution, and uh, which then kicks in our lease for 6000 progressively up to $9,000 per month. So what do we want? What do I want? I want a decision tonight. 
I will think that indecision is continually harmful to the theater as well it is for the community and the council. Um, I want to recognize the future of the city, that leveraging all arts resources is an enviable trait by most every other city on this side of town. The fact that you have the Challenger Center, which is an amazing uh, science museum, you have Theater Works down the road, which is a fantastic community theater. You have the West Valley Arts Museum Lodge right over here, and you have the Arizona Broadway Theater, arguably the largest uh, professional theater company in the valley. Aligning all of our organizations with the initiatives of the city will be much easier for the city to meet both economic and civic agendas. Put us on a pedestal or valuable to those initiatives, not just an arts initiative. So it's very simple. Please allow us to begin negotiations, perform the due diligence, and finalize a sale agreement within the framework that we have previously identified. Um, we're willing to look at an amendment of the current lease, because obviously that obligation exists, for a period of time while we do this due diligence and, and work out a sales agreement that we can live with. It's a win-win-win. The city can receive some value on this land. ABT will get the ability to refinance and reinvest in its mission and the community will have further confirmation that Peoria is a community-centric place and a place of pride. Um, and pride of ownership is very valuable. So in closing, after all, um, I hope that I can address any concerns that there are, air them now. If there's any questions about how the operations work, please voice your concerns as quickly as e and as easily as you can. The packet has a lot of information. My staff is here to address anything you want to know about how we operate. Um, I'd be more than happy to do that. My job is as the custodian of this theater. It, I, it is held in my trust to make sure I do everything possible to do what is best for the theater company, recognizing what is best for this community. And so I will work tirelessly to continue to find ways to keep our operations successful. I'm an arts advocate, I'm an artist myself, and I'm not probably going away anytime soon. So I will continue to fight for what this community wants. I'm also a citizen, a parent, and a voter, and I want to create a world that I want to live in. I ask the council to seriously consider the role that you all play in shaping this community. Supporting a nonprofit organization is supporting the community it serves. It's not supporting Kyle Klopaki. It's not supporting somebody. It is supporting your very own community. And the work that we do is valuable. It's valued by the people around. You have the ability tonight to be the architect of a vibrant, responsible, and engaged community, the city, a city that we can all be proud to call home. Thank you. Okay. Please. Please. Don't force me to clear the room. You can laugh, but I'm serious. No outbursts and demonstrations, please. Thank you. Have a seat. I'm sure we'll have questions for you. We have three, three more speakers. Next one is Bert Kellum. And I'd also ask if you can, would you please hold it to three minutes? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. My name is Bert Kellum. I'm a volunteer with the, uh, at the Arizona Broadway Theater. Actually, I serve on their board of directors and I'm currently the vice chair of the board. The Arizona Broadway Theater is uh, it's a fantastic organization. I've lived for over 20 years now in the West Valley, and it has been my, uh, my observation that it is somewhat rare that the West Valley has something that is, that is uh, bigger than or better than or something held in greater regard or, or, or greater acclaim than things that are available in the East Valley, particularly in Scottsdale. That is not true with the Arizona Broadway Theater. It is unquestionably the finest professional theater in all of Arizona. And by a considerable extent, it has the largest uh, house of any theater in the, in the uh, metropolitan Arizona uh, area. Um, it is not a community theater, it is a professional theater. All of our actors and actresses are fully paid professionals. About half of them are brought in for each show from out of state, mostly from Broadway. They are housed in rental housing near us or in the houses of volunteers or uh, board of director members. 
we have a live orchestra that is uh, com comprised of fully paid uh, professional musicians. We have a professional chef who does, an, uh, who does a fantastic job. Uh, each of the uh, 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 shows has a special food that's, that's appropriate to that particular show. Uh, we have uh, a professional uh, designers, so it's costume designers, uh, set designers. All of that work is done in studios uh, on the campus. They do that job so well, in fact, that many other theaters around the country regularly rent our sets and costumes, and it becomes a source of, of additional income. All of this excellence, however, does not come cheap. Uh, there is a cost. And the Arizona Broadway Theater, in common with other professional not-for-profit performing arts organizations like the Phoenix Symphony, uh, the, uh, Arizona, the Arizona Ballet, uh, the uh, Art Theater, Art Museum, uh, all of them have to depend on many other sources other than just the gate, the tickets which we uh, charge. Uh, we get great help from sponsors. We get a help from the city. We have a, a, a help from them each year. We, we go to foundations. After, as I said before, every uh, show, we solicit the audience as, uh, for their charitable help in keeping the organization going. Uh, no performing arts center really makes money. I think you're aware of that. In fact, our competitors seem to be kind of disappearing as time uh, goes on. Um, in two cases, in fact, I know board members had to step up and actually pay for the rental, for the, uh, 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 for the rights to do uh, various shows. So we, we don't have a lot of money, I can tell you that. Uh, we do need help. All of these other groups get enormous help from the cities in which they are located, where the venue is located, and we need really this kind of consideration. It is a source of enormous pride for the city of Peoria, in fact, for the whole uh, West Valley. So I echo what uh, Kyle said. I hope that we can come to some kind of a, uh, a agreement that, uh, that, that we can somehow pay for uh, and take care of this lease. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Mitchell Goldberg. Thank you, Kyle Cassandra, city council members, mayor, uh, for allowing me this time to speak to you. My name is Mitch, and I'm a business owner here in Peoria. I'm Peoria, part of the Peoria Chamber of Commerce. But much more importantly, I'm the father of an 11-year-old girl who is both a theater goer, as well as a student at ABT camps, clinics, and also a performer at ABT. She has truly formed an unbelievable love of the performing arts and calls ABT her second home and her favorite theater in the world. And just this past Christmas, her d dream did come true as she was starred in Annie, as Annie, in Annie, on ABT's main stage. ABT has been a huge part of our lives, and I'm here today to speak briefly about the importance of the city of Peoria's continued negotiations. Without Peoria's continued partnership, we are extremely concerned that the children's programming would be something that might cease to exist. This has been such an integral part of my daughter's development. My wife and I grew up in New York, where the arts are placed in very high regard. And since moving to Arizona eight years ago, we considered ABT the Valley's best, high-quality option to the arts as a whole. The arts are essential as they allow our children the opportunity to explore the creativity while expanding their imaginations. And shouldn't Peoria continue to be the Valley's best, destina best destination for families by supporting ABT? Won't that bring more families and more opportunities for Peoria to grow in into the best and most sought-after city in this Valley? The children's program here at ABT are incredible value and important to Peoria as a community. They provide high quality, professional instruction and performance that is unparalleled. They utilize their own staff as well as professional actors in the business that the youth of Peoria look up to as role models, like my daughter does. She talks about these people at the dinner table, in the car, before going to bed at night, everywhere and every time. She hopes to someday to work at ABT, Kyle, Sandra, <coughs> to help shape some of the other young children. Isn't that the kind of well-rounded, educated children we want raised here in Peoria? Being a business owner that focused on kids for a living and understanding how challenging the economy has been, I'm here to ask that you continue negotiations with Arizona Broadway Theater to come to a mutual beneficial agreement that would allow all current operations to be maintained. Each week we hear about another theater closing its doors because they just can't make ends meet. One is in fact up the road at the end of the season closing its doors in Peoria. As we all can guess with substantial increased bottom lines, all in extra programming like the youth camps, workshops, theater for young audiences, will be the first to go. This impacts the youth of our community who will eventually grow up into these tax-paying individuals. Will they want to stay in Peoria if there, aren't theirs, if there aren't these amenities that speak to them or their children someday? 
Certainly at this time when all school budgets in Peoria are being cut and continue to be cut, the art and music departments are the first to go. Now is the time we need to do anything and everything possible to keep our valuable theater resource, ABT, in Peoria alive, prosperous, and thriving. In a time when culture is being thrown to the curb, we need to work together to foster a strong artistic community, and there is no better way than to support than to continue your discussions with ABT, which is the premier theater of the Valley. We are just lucky that they happen to be in Peoria. We love ABT and Peoria, and we hope the right choices are made for the future of Peoria and the arts. For my children, for your children, and someday for our children's children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, please, oh, thank you. Cassandra Kopaki. Good evening, Mayor Barrett and members of council. My name is Cassandra Klopaki, artistic producer and co-founder of Arizona Broadway Theater. I'm also a wife, a mother, a businesswoman, and I currently serve on the board of the Peoria Education Foundation. I'm not here to talk about business or land or even a building, as there has, has been and will be plenty of that here tonight, but I am here to talk to you about the heart of Arizona Broadway Theater, which is ultimately what you will be voting for or against tonight. Arizona Broadway Theater was never built to make a great profit, but instead to provide great art and entertainment in a gathering place that the community could be proud of, along with an environment, a home really that would foster artistic talent from the youngest budding actor, which you just saw one here, all the way up to the most experienced professionals in the industry, which you will find behind me. When Kyle and I moved to Peoria over 12 years ago, we did not come to start a business. We came to start a family literally. Being Montana natives, we weren't comfortable raising children in New York City. <laughs> so we planned to put roots down and put our education and experience to good use producing exceptional theater in Peoria, Arizona. Our two sons, now six and nine, were born as the building was raised on Paradise Lane. And they now attend Desert Harbor Elementary, a PUSD school. And as our immediate family began to grow, so did our theater family. And as it takes a lot of people and effort to do what we do, uh, we soon after saw a tremendous reward. We found ourselves surrounded by a family of fiercely loyal supporters that have seen us through challenges as well as successes. And they have been with us at every turn. In fact, there are staff members and volunteers and patrons here with us tonight that have been with us since the tent, as they will proudly state to you, um, or even from before. And they, along with many that have followed in their footsteps, are the foundation, the true heart of Arizona Broadway Theater. They continue to work alongside us to keep our doors open as other arts organizations around us fail. I assure you, ABT is not a corporation. We are the exact opposite, a nonprofit arts organization. Every choice we make, be it financial or artistic, we make in the name of this family philosophy. Your decisions tonight will not only affect the well-being of the community asset, one that continues to give far more than it will ever receive, but more importantly, your vote will affect the heart of this organization, its people. 200 dedicated volunteers, 350 hardworking employees, 650 actors, musicians, directors, and designers, 800 Academy kids, and over 1,500 subscribers. Please give them your consideration and your support. They are my family, and we are Peoria. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. That is the end of the public comment. We'll put up to the council now, questions and comments. Yeah, Ms. Carla. Thank you. First of all, thank you for coming. I love your shirts. <laughs> I just had to say it. Um, you know, many of us sitting up here on this council have also been with you since the tent. And we're proud of that. We're very proud of that. We absolutely, and I'm going to just speak for myself. I'm sorry to say we, but, but I am very, very proud of what Arizona Broadway Theater has brought to the city of Peoria. I mean, recognition that I have not seen. I think I saw, Kyle, I think I saw your picture on the um, Arizona Business Journal this week. Uh, you show up in all kinds of surprising places. I see you on the news. Uh, it's, it's tremendous, the amount of publicity that you've been able to get. You, you truly are a, a one-man show, and no pun intended. <laughs> uh, and we appreciate all of that, every single bit of it, without a doubt. Um, but I do have to say, we are not talking simply about heart here. 
we are talking about a business and we are talking about a city and a municipality and you know all kinds of ugly words get stuck in there like tax dollars and those kinds of obligations and it is it is the job of the city council to be the guardian not only of arts and culture which i personally am extremely supportive of but also of the broader picture which is taxpayer dollars and the city as a whole having said that i am not um I'm not trying to say that what I that that I that I want to stop our relationship with Arizona Broadway Theater because I certainly don't want that to happen. But there are more people in our marriage than I think is satisfactory. There's three people in this marriage. There is the city, there is the profit entity and the not for profit entity. And that for profit entity in there, the mistress if you will, is is stealing the heart away from our relationship as far as I'm concerned. How do we say that we want to do business with somebody who is for profit? Those investors are making money at the same time. Uh, there is there is a deficiency on the part of what the taxpayers are receiving with regards to the land that they own. So that's where the qualm lies with me. That's where the gray area is, if you will. And that's where I'm having trouble moving forward. Now, we, we've done a lot of um, deferred and delayed and dollars, you know, $1 instead of $6,000 a month and no dollars instead of $6,000 or $9,000 a month. We have showed a lot of good faith. And at the same time, there is a group of investors, and you know, I don't know what they're getting because we haven't been able to see that part of the picture. That has not been disclosed to us. And so, you know, without that information, I'm not sure how I can have enough information to make a decision. Thank you. Thank you. What else? Ms. Patel? Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I think that the city has looked favorably and continues to look favor favorably uh, towards Arizona Broadway Theater. I don't think that's the question that's uh, before us today. Um, like like uh, Councilmember Carlot said, there's there's more than just entertainment here. We have we have citizens that we have to look out for. Um, that may not be quite as passionate about the arts as all of you are. We have to look out for them. We have to look out for the best interest of the city, and we're trying to look out for the best interest of Arizona Broadway Theater as well. You wear many hats. You are a gathering place for the city, and the city has many events at your facility. But I think there was a misconception. I don't think the city ever said that we didn't want to renegotiate or negotiate uh, with Arizona Broadway Theater. That was never the case. We simply said the proposal that came before us was unacceptable, and then we wanted to open it back up to see if there was something that would work for everybody. So having said that, um, I, I, just want, I just want everyone to know that, uh, that nobody in this chamber wants Arizona Broadway Theater to go dark. It doesn't serve a, a, a good purpose for anybody. Um, and that's what I'll take into consideration today with my vote. Mr. Ames. That wasn't me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I go to the Broadway Theater. I've enjoyed myself there. Um, and there are other entities. Uh, the Challenger Center was brought up. They were interested in the city bailing them out. We didn't do that. We can't have everybody coming here and say, bail us out. That just doesn't work. I know the citizens I represent don't want me to vote for that. And I also have the same concern that uh, uh, Councilwoman Carlot has about the Kloss Enterprises. We haven't seen anything about the books of Kloss Enterprises. There really hasn't been disclosure. And that's a for-profit entity. And you know, there were other, there were other for profit companies. Uh, Frosty Center, uh, Senorita wanted us to deal with them in terms of the lease we have with them. No, we, we don't just directly do that kind of a thing. 
And the offer that was brought to us was a very poor offer for the city. So uh, I think we maybe stand as a group that uh, we're not going to accept that. Mr. Rivero. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to make a short comment as I don't, I don't want to repeat uh, what my colleagues just said because I, I'm in agreement with them. I've uh, worked with the Broadway Theater for the last couple of years. I've worked with its director. I believe we have a good relationship. And in regards of, to the relationship, I'm an open-minded person. Um, the city is very large. We have 160,000 uh, uh, citizens in the, in the city of Peoria. I represent the Southern District. There's probably not a lot of uh, the residents I represent that go to Broadway Theater. But I'm open-minded, and I look at the city as a whole. With that said, as I've approached every vote that's critical or any vote on the council, I'm open to a middle ground approach. I'm open to a compromise. And uh, at the end of the day, the way I vote is by protecting the citizens and protecting all the interests that are involved in the vote. So I look forward to future conversations. Thank you. Mr. Edwards. Yes, thank you. Here we go again. <laughs> um, again, I, I'm in favor of the arts as well. And I don't think that any of us on this council have, have ever said anything other to the contrary. Um, I think what we simply need to do is just come together, try to work out a, a solution for, that's agreeable for not only the city but for uh, ABT. Um, but at the same time, um, Kyle, we do need to, to have some information that's not being provided to us. And I think with that information, we could have a better understanding of, of where we need to come together. Thank you. Mr. Leone? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I, uh, you know, a lot of people out there probably already know me. Uh, I, I went to the first time they had it open at the sports complex in a tent, and they, I know the mayor was there. I think Kathy was there too, you know. And I've been a season ticket holder for about, oh, I don't know, maybe eight years. And it, it's great. I, I like the Broadway Theater. I was talking to Kyle last week when I was up there, and I asked him if he knew about Blinstrom's. Now, if anybody is from Boston, like I am, Blinstrom's was a nightclub, just like the Broadway Theater. It was dancing, singing, part of the, all that. And I, that's the kind of, Entertainment I was brought up in. Not movie theaters, but uh, Broadway shows. <clears throat> and I think it's great that we have it. But we do need more information. And uh, my mind isn't made up yet. But I would like to know, are we going to carry this over, Mayor? And bring it back at the executive meeting or what? I'm sorry, say again? Are we going to carry this over? No. No? OK. Well, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Well, everybody else has had their piece. I'm, I'm going to take my shot at this. You know, any group can come together, put up bricks and mortar and pave, pave roads and call it a city. But what gives a city its heart is the arts. And I'm a strong supporter of the arts. And what we have here is a problem, and it's a misconception that was seeded into the public consciousness a couple of years ago, that we're giving away money to the Arizona Broadway Theater. We are not doing that. We are not collecting rent on the piece of ground. That's true. And we push that back and we push that back and we kick that can down the road in order to allow them to survive. Now, what's happening now is there's some public misperception and a public suspicion that you're getting away with something when we all know that's not true. Now, it's pretty simple here. The council can do a couple of things. We can say, no, nope, pay $6,000 a month and if you go out of business, that's the way it is. So what, what happens? Right now, we have a piece of land that the city's not collecting any money on. However, we have a going concern that's providing 350 jobs, sales taxes, and is a great cultural amenity for the city of Peoria. Now, if we start sticking them rent on land and they go out of business, we're still not getting any money for the land. We've lost 350 jobs, and we have no sales tax, and we have a hell of a cultural black eye that I don't think the West Valley, especially the city of Peoria wants. I have a suggestion. My suggestion is this, and you know, I'll bring you up here in a moment, Kyle. Uh, I would suggest that the, one of the burrs under everybody's saddle here is that they're not paying any rent. 
So I suggest you begin to pay a rent of maybe $1,000 a month, and then we resume or begin negotiations over again. And we, we, we throw everything out and we start from scratch. We give it six months or a year, whatever's, whatever everybody thinks. And we come back and we take another look at this. But in, in the interim, we're collecting a modest amount of money and then you open your books to us and we will have that negotiation. I, have to, I understand, I recognize the problem that we're facing here. It's the same problem the Challenger Center had. The Challenger Center was in a situation where one entity owned the building, the other entity owned the land. You can't do anything with that if you're the one that's trying to operate that business. Because you can't get a bank loan because you don't own anything. So you have to put those pieces together. And this is essentially what we're talking about here. It's possibly or potentially in the future putting those pieces together. Getting the commercial piece out of Arizona Broadway Theater and then working a deal out to purchase the land in the long term. And I would suggest that we do that. That would be my suggested solution to this issue tonight. Questions or comments? Mr. Ames? Yeah, I'm amenable to something like that, but not a thousand dollars a month. It would have to be noticeably more than that. Otherwise, it's just going to drag on and on. And we really need uh, some kind of resolution. And we need to see all the pieces. We need really full disclosure. No, have full disclosure. I, I haven't seen that. Um, so, no, I, I, I wouldn't vote for $1,000 a month. Anyone else? Ms. Carlin? My biggest issue is the, the third person in the room, and that's the uh, for-profit entity. So. It, you know, I, I think things are different when you're talking about a not-for-profit than they are when you're talking about a for-profit, and I need to have that aspect removed, fully disclosed, removed, a pathway to removal. That's, that's the um, tipping point for me. Thank you. Mr. Edward. Um, I'm not sure if $1,000, um, but I don't want a year kicking this down the road another year. Um, they've been kicking it, we've all been kicking it down the road for, for many years, and like I talked to Kyle in the past, I'd like to see a six month uh, period where we can come together and get this, you know, get a, a contract worked out. Doing it another year is just postponing it even longer. Uh, six months, you guys should be able to come to, between staff and, and, and uh, the theater, we should be able to come to an agreement. That's it. Does anyone care to make a motion? I'll make a motion. All right. So I'll motion that we uh, accept $2,000 a month payment uh, for a period of six um, and continue negotiations for a six month period at which time um, staff can come back with um, a new contract for us to take a look at. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Edwards, seconded by Mr. Patena. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Ames. Um, I, I would like to see more than 2,000. I, I think maybe I could accept 3,000, but not, not 2,000, because I, I, I wanted it to be a, a, a serious impediment. You know, the Challenger Center came to us, and we didn't give them a penny. They had the same kind of story that you had. We do so much for the community. Can't you help us? And. Uh, we said no. They had a loan from a person for a million dollars, and he was calling the loan. At least we knew all the particulars of, the, of that case. In this situation, we don't know all the particulars. Is that a motion to uh, to? No. So the motion still stands at two thousand. Right. Any other questions or comments, Mr. Rivera? Okay. The motion is to charge them $2,000 a month for the next six months while we negotiate the land deal. And they'll come back in six months and we'll see where we're at. Correct. Everybody understand that? Please vote. Clerk will record the vote. Who's short? Oh. 
It is approved with uh, Rivero, Ames, and Leone dissenting. Thank you very much. You can cheer now. <laughs> Thank you. Next up is 18R, public hearing. Well, I'll wait just a minute. <laughs> And thank you for attending. We do this again in two weeks. Okay, let's go ahead and try. Uh, 18R public hearing, liquor license, various locations. Uh, this is, the, I'm gonna open a public hearing on uh, a new restaurant, liquor license series 12 for 71 American Grill, located at 28615 North El Mirage Road, Suite 102. Uh, and a new restaurant, liquor license series 12 for Dow Kitchen, located at 8385 West Deer Valley Road, Suite 114. We have a Brent, staff report. And Brent Madding will speak to this. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council properties were posted in accordance with Arizona statutes. All reviewing departments recommend approval. All fees were paid and no comments were received from the public. Okay, at this point, I'm going to open the public hearing. Would anyone care to comment on these two liquor license applications? Anyone in the audience care to comment on the liquor license applications? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Council action discussion and possible action to recommend approval for the two... Uh, applications. Do we have any questions or comments? Seeing none, could I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Moved by uh, Ms. Carlett, seconded by Mr. Patena. This is uh, 18R, once again, uh, new restaurant liquor license series 12 for 71 American Grill, and a new restaurant liquor license series 12 for Dow Kitchen. Please vote. The clerk will record the votes. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Next is 19, our public hearing rezoning, 75th Avenue and Greenway Road. Chris Huck is our planning community development director. We'll introduce this one. Thank you, Carl. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is a request on behalf of DR Horton to rezone a 5.79 acre parcel from uh, SR43 Suburban Ranch, one acre lot sizes, to R16 to allow for the development of a 19 lot single family residential development. The property is located at the northeast corner of 75th and Greenway, uh, identified with the, uh, red, uh, the red border, if you will, on the screen. The 75th Avenue is identified as an arterial on our general plan. Greenway Road is a collector and the intersection is signalized. Contextually, the uh, site is bordered by a tier and north 5 subdivision to the north. Uh, to the east, as you see, is the Greenway Water Treatment Plant. Working our way south is a Terracita subdivision south of Greenway Road. At the southwest corner, there's a retail uh, development along with some offices and some medical offices, and then west of that, a park and church. And then to the northwest corner is uh, the Arrowhead Shadows residential development. This slide illustrates the proposed development plan. Again, the request is to rezone the property from SR43 to R16. R16 is a single family zoning district with minimum lot size of 6,000 square feet. The, um, we also have a preliminary plat that has been submitted concurrently with this application is dependent on the outcome of the rezone case. On the development plan before you, um, there are 19 lots. The lots range from the smallest being a, roughly about 6,300 square feet to the largest, the uh, corner lot being about 13,844 square feet. This yields a gross density of about 3.28 units per acre. And then as part of the development, they have to provide a usable open space, recreational open space and that amount is about 15% of the project. In terms of improvements that we would look at as part of the subdivision process, they would be required to do all their uh, frontage improvements, curb, sidewalk, landscaping along Greenway, and also 75th. 
the, in terms of sidewalk improvements, it would be an eight-foot sidewalk along 75th and a six-foot sidewalk along Greenway. This graphic illustrates the existing zoning in the area. Uh, again, we see a mix of zoning categories in the area directly to the north. The um, Tierra Norte 5 that's zoned R110, so a minimum of 10,000 square feet. Uh, to the south, R112, 12,000 minimum. To the northwest corner the is uh, R18, a number of R18 subdivisions up there. And then at the northwest corner where you see Tierra Buena Lane and 75th, that was a project also uh, owned and going to be developed by DR Horton that was recently rezoned to R16 called Tierra Buena Lane. And then that brown area, that's um, RM1, that's a project called the, the um, Running Horse at Arrowhead, and that minimum lot size is about 3,000 square feet. This graphic illustrates the general plan, and again, again, any rezone decision has to be in conformance with the general plan. The um, designation, the land use designation for the property is low density residential. This is a designation that um, is desirous of moderate lot sizes, detached single family, within the density range of two to five units per acre with a target density of three units per acre. As we look at the uh, general plan uh, uh, analysis, the um, density of 3.28 units per acre is compliant. It is within the target density. The, um, the, uh, it is also compliant with the character that is envisioned in that category. And then stepping back, this is an infill lot. Uh, it's proximate to services and we believe provides land use transition from a signalized intersection and also advances other general plan goals of providing a mix of housing types and lifestyle choices in the area. Now, as part of the rezone process, there is a, um, a um, notification and citizen participation process. In terms of the notification that the staff provides, when we get an application in, we provide a postcard uh, called a notice of application to all properties within a 600-foot radius and all HOAs within one mile, all registered HOAs. And then um, prior to the case going to hearing, we also provide another notice called a notice of hearing, same radius and uh, uh, same uh, HOAs that we would contact. Now, during the extent of the process, we did receive two calls in support. We also re received two calls in opposition, including one letter. Uh, the letter is attached in your packet. And some of the things that were outlined in the letter, some of the concerns was that the, the um, writer wanted a minimum of 10,000 square feet in terms of minimum lot size. There was a concern that there would be a diminishment in the uh, property values. There was a concern that the um, character would uh, introduce crime and result in uh, vandal vandalization of some of the open space areas. And in that regard, the developer did agree to um, provide a wrought iron fence around, if you recall, the development plan. There was an open space area at the corner. They agreed to provide a, uh, a wrought iron uh, fence around that to uh, keep uh, those not in development from going in that area. And also, as part of the rezone process, we do require that the applicant hold a neighborhood meeting. A neighborhood meeting was held on December 5th at Paseo, Paseo Verde Elementary School. Councilmember Ames at that meeting was the only one in attendance. And then at the, um, we had a Planning and Zoning Commission public hearing on February 21st, where the commission voted to recommend, unanimously recommend, uh, forward a recommendation of approval to the council. At that meeting, there were no speakers. Uh, again, we did have that one letter that we received um, in opposition. Now, subsequent to the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission hearing, Last week, we received uh, a petition that contained 84 signatures in opposition. So if you look at the graphic on the right, the area in brown, that's a quarter mile radius. Uh, 69 of those signatures were, th were within the quarter mile radius of the site. The area in yellow, the next ring around it is a half mile radius, and we received 15 uh, signatures in opposition in that area. Now the concern cited, again, minimum lot size. The, the feeling was that the lots should be larger and more reflective uh, at a 10,000 square foot size or larger. There was a perception that the um, character proposed would result in a reduction in property values. And there was also a belief that the uh, character introdu would introduce uh, a number of rental homes to the area and, and detract from the character. So with that, the recommendation that, that staff and the planning commission has forwarded to the council, uh, again, was recommending approval of case Z120010, subject to conditions one through 26. I'd be happy to take any questions. Okay, I'm going to hold, ask they hold the questions. We have speakers. Let's hear the speakers first. Uh, first one is Dennis Baker. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, my name is Dennis Baker. 
I live at uh, Paradise West Estates in the city of Peoria and lived there for 20 years. And I'm here tonight to oppose the council's rezoning and allowing D.R. Horton to build homes on 6,000 square foot lots on the northeast corner of 75th and Greenway. I request that D.R. Horton provide lot sizes of no less than 10,000 square feet. The lot sizes, I'll reiterate again, Paradise West Estates are 18,000 square feet. Terracita is no less than 12. Tierra Norte is no less than 10. Therefore, we are requiring D.R. Horton to provide lots no less than the size of Tierra Norte, which is 10,000 square feet. I have been told that D.R. Horton is unwilling to compromise on the lot size. I'm asking the council to please insist that D.R. Horton build their home on a minimum of 10,000 square foot lot. Approving the smaller size lots is unnecessary and not in keeping with the surrounding zoning. One last thing, our properties have just begun to start appreciating again after the Great Recession. And I ask that the council to block the building of high density housing too close to our subdivisions, which will surely lower the values once again. I think we've had enough of the low values. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, boy. Mark Schussel? Yeah, you it. I forget I did, yeah. <laughs> it's Scussel. Oh, okay. That's close uh, enough for government work. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, council members and staff. I'm Mark Scussel. I represent, or I'm speaking for, some of the people from Terracita, which is the subdivision directly due south of the proposed uh, subdivision by D.R. Horton. Uh, we got a letter from Lorraine Thacker regarding, let's get together, let's try to figure out something, let's get to the council, let's get a petition together. Talked to my wife and said, hey, what do you want to do? She said, let's hit the streets. We petitioned the neighborhood, we walked door to door, we got signatures from 36 out of the 39 homes in that subdivision opposing the 6,000 square foot lot size. And they also signed saying that they would accept the subdivision based on no less than 10,000 square foot lot size. Uh, everybody, everybody's presentation was great. I'd just like to come up here and say, yeah, what he said. But uh, we're, we're basically very adjacent to that subdivision and to propose subdivision, and so are the other ones that are going to be speaking tonight. So I just want to say thanks for your time. appreciate you giving me a chance to say my piece, and there are probably some other people from the subdivisions as well. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Brad Denham. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and council members. I uh, want to appreciate you guys giving us the time to stand here. And I'm, I'm in support. I'm neighbors with Mark. Uh, probably will affect me most greatly. I'm the one of the only two-story homes uh, directly behind the uh, neighborhood. And so I will have to uh, look at lots that are 6,000 square feet. I think the gentleman who presented the argument when he came up here today, he talked about lifestyle choice. And when I made a choice to move there, it was for a lifestyle to have a 13,000 square foot lot next to homes who had 18,000 square foot lots. We already compromised once with a zoning of an R10 and the homes are, are nice, but definitely are a lower value than the homes that are in the uh, neighborhoods to the south. Uh, the compromise further went forth with the the neighborhood with 3,000 square foot ha uh, houses, which is Running Horse. And if you drive by Running Horse's neighborhood, you'll see on any given day, there's not enough parking for the uh, residents of Running Horse, so they park out in the entry right off of 75th Avenue going into the neighborhood. So they're clearly not even parking into their own neighborhood. Uh, my concern is that we do not have a gated neighborhood, that, th that the limitation on lot size will cause overflow parking as well. And being that we live just south of the neighborhood, uh, people will park in our neighborhood. Um, in addition, um, I think you know it was stated well about the, the different sizes of the lots. 
Um, you know, when I bought the home there, uh, I paid $375,000 plus or minus in the year 2000. I've lived there, paid my taxes, never asked for any money from the city. And uh, as one of the gentlemen has mentioned, we're just now starting to see the home values recover to the levels that we paid in 2000. And to put lot homes on a 6,000 square foot lot would be devastating to the value of our homes. It would uh, have uh, put us probably back in a situation that many of the homeowners would be underwater from what they originally paid uh, for the home in 2000. And uh, just would like to uh, again reiterate that we are uh, completely uh, opposed to a 6,000 square foot lot. When we purchased there again, the expectation was that it was a church. It's supposed to have been a church for 10 years um, plus. And, and obviously a church is not what's going in there now or what's proposed to go in there. Um, we're not opposed to development. We're opposed to irresponsible development. And I think uh, we probably spent the first hour of the meeting tonight talking about someone who made irresponsible development. And I think that we're headed down that same path by um, putting small homes, high density homes in a neighborhood that is simply not consistent with, with those surroundings. So I appreciate again um, your time and um, here to support my neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. This is a public hearing on the rezoning of 75th Avenue and Greenway Road. Would anyone else in the audience care to address this issue? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Questions or comments by the council? Mr. Ames. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Just before we do that, I need to go to Mr. Kemp for just a moment. Mayor Council, I just want to know in the petitions, there were some issues raised, such as income levels of families, rental properties. These are things you should not consider under the Federal Fair Housing Act amendments in 1988. Those are things that we do not take into account. There's certainly a number of things for you to consider here, but we don't take those types of things into account in our considerations. Thank you. Mr. Ames. Did you want to say something? Uh, Council, I just wanted to point out that the applicant hasn't been afforded an opportunity to speak yet either. Excuse me? The I'm applicant hasn't had a chance. The public hearing, the applicant should have stepped forward. Oh, okay. Applicant still here? Yeah. Come down. Uh, I'll come back to you. Okay. Excuse me, I thought you were just speaking to the general public. My name is Ryan Weed. I work with Cohen Van Lew Engineering. I represent DR Horton on this project. Uh, we've got a short presentation if you have the, have the time. I think we can skip through probably this slide. Thank you. This gives a brief I, history. I'm which ask you to hold on. We're not getting anything here. There it is. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Technical glitches here. This first slide gives a brief rundown on, on the history of the project, which staff has already adequately, I think, covered. Um, we did receive notification later in the process regarding uh, the neighbor's concerns. Uh, that seems to be generated by a, a neighbor not immediately adjacent to the project, but a, a distance outside of the, the public notification requirements that the city has. We do see this as a development of an infill parcel. Uh, we believe that development of a simple parcel will greater benefit not only the neighborhood but Peoria as a, as a general because of avoiding vandalism, uh, dumping, that, and trespassing that's currently taking place on the property. When I was out visiting neighbors here last week, I noticed a, a semi truck unloading and offloading uh, cars, uh, something that uh, annoyed some of the residents that I spoke with, something that's taking place today that obviously development of the property would prohibit. The R16 is in conformance with the general plan, which has been discussed, provides a buffer from 75th Avenue and from Greenway uh, to the existing homes that are to the north and to the east, reducing dust, reducing traffic noise, and increasing the security of those existing homes. Development as R16 provides a good buffer to the parcel versus a commercial or apartment complex, the potential for the property. Um, one of the resident or neighborhood members mentioned that the church hasn't developed in that parcel and it's been waiting 10 years. Well, likely that church is not going to develop on that parcel. So what would take place on the parcel? This is the current plan of the project. A couple of points we want to make on this parcel. Over on the west corner of the project, 
DR Horton did agree to provide a wrought iron fence because of the security that was pointed out. That was an issue that the, uh, sorry, I guess they're missing the visual again. Yeah, sorry. Um, there, the red line on the western portion of the project is the wrought iron fence. We received concerns from the neighborhood about security and, and loitering, I guess, that's taking place in other open space areas. So because of that, DR Horton volunteered the wrought iron fence. The only other point that the neighborhood has raised that they, that they desire 10,000 square foot homes or lots on the parcel. One thing that we'd like to point out on this pro project that the lots are an average of over 7,000 square feet on average, with the minimum being 6,300 square feet. What we're also providing on the project is 120 foot lot depth. The 120 foot lot depth is what is being provided in the project to the north and to the east, immediately adjacent to the project. With 100 foot, which is 20 feet greater than the city minimum. Because we're affording this greater lot depth, we're able to provide a setback of essentially 30 feet from the wall, the future, the existing wall to the new homes. This is double what's being provided within the, the project to the north and east, which only provides a 15 foot setback. Now, if a developer were able to afford developing this project as an R110, they'd only be required a 15 foot setback, which is only, which is gonna greatly increase, or shorten, or decrease the distance between the future R, potential R110 homes and the existing homes. So I'm not sure that the residents, because they did not attend any of the previous meetings, had any of this information when they were signing up on their, when, when they were asked whether they preferred R16 or R110. They didn't have this information because they didn't attend the meetings to hear us present our case at that time or express their concerns at that time. One other advantage on this project is we're able to provide a 20, 23, I think it's 23 to 25 foot wide landscape track along Greenway Road which is two and a half to three times that that's being provided on the neighborhood to the south of Greenway Road. It's providing a great buffer to their homes. Not only does Greenway Road provide a buffer, but also that landscape tract. And that, that obviously is there in the public right of way. And that landscape is going to be there that's not there today, as well as the sidewalk connection to provide pedestrian access over to the commercial uses uh, on the southwest corner of 75th Avenue and Greenway. Our main concern that on this project is the opposition has come from one neighbor that's it circulated petitions to other neighbors and without full information regarding the project and its benefits that it provides not only to Peoria as a, as a whole, as far as filling in the infill parcel, but also to the neighbors and it provides a good transitional use to the project. Our other concern is that if Dior Horton has concerns or is not able to help get the project off the ground as an R110 project, that other developers aren't gonna be able to get the project off of the ground as an R110 project. And all of the opposition now is gonna be on public record and I don't know that the property will, will likely come to development as a residential project, which I know the neighborhood really desires. They really wanna see it developed as, R1, as a single family residential project versus any other use. I think they're missing an opportunity, however, to see that develop as an R1, R16 project, given the benefits that DR Fortin is, is affording the project at this time. Thank you. I have a quick question for you. Uh, if you had to go to, to R110s, how many lots would you lose? Or we'd be at about nine lots. Nine lots, okay, thank you. Questions or comments? Okay. Mr. Ames. Yeah, I've had uh, discussions with some citizens and I've gotten... Uh, just, is, this, is this for the, the attorney? Oh, no. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. No, I, I, I've, I've already there. spoken with him, yes. I'm sorry. That's right. Go ahead. Okay. In fact, that's the way uh, you know I was going to start. I did uh, spoke, speak with Mr. Weed and, and some others from uh, Dr. Horton, and at that time, uh, initially there was no opposition. In fact, uh, when they did have a meeting, I was the only one that attended. And then later, there was one person who objected, but then I started getting a lot of emails, some independent of, of that person as well. And now we see, uh, you said 84 signatures, but I counted the signatures, like I see 143 signatures. Uh, maybe I double counted some, I don't know, maybe the, the record, the different record was the same person. But there's a, a lot of opposition to this. And I suggested to uh, Mr. Weed and, uh, and D.R. Horton that they hold a true public meeting 
uh, you, uh, Mr. Weed uh, did tell me that when he went around and talked to some people that thought maybe it was a good idea. I think maybe if you had a true public meeting, a little broader maybe than the initial coverage that we did, maybe that larger circle that, uh, that, that we saw earlier presented, uh, there could be a true discussion. So what I would like to see, I would like to postpone this indefinitely until there really is a true public hearing and both sides can present their, uh, their uh, arguments. And, uh, you, you know, maybe, uh, maybe there is uh, some resolution that can be reached between uh, 6,000 square feet and 10,000 square feet. Okay. Two questions. Number one, Mr. Kemp, is, is that legal? We can postpone this? Mayor, Council, that would certainly be one option. I mean, essentially, you could postpone the meeting. Uh, I mean, postpone acting on this item uh, for a public meeting, and that's well within the council's uh, option to do. Uh, Thank you. Did you want to make that a motion? Uh, yes, I'm making that a motion. Okay, it's been moved to postpone action on this indefinitely. Indefinitely, and uh, request that there be a, a true public hearing broader coverage before we consider it again. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. It's been moved and second. Did you have a comment? I, would, I just want to mention, obviously, we did have the neighborhood meeting that's required by, as a part of the ordinance. If we need some better direction on what circumference or what diameter of radius we need to request the public attend. I, I guess we're missing out here on on why this project is different than any other project that would come through the, the council and planning commission. Yes. How, how are we different than any other um, project? So we, we've asked others to do broader and, and they have and uh, we can help you with that. The motion is to delay uh, action on this item indefinitely and have the developer have it at two public meetings in the area before it comes back. Ms. Carla? Sure. All right. Um, yeah, this is the discussion period. Okay, thank you. I, I find delaying things indefinitely doesn't help anyone. Uh, there's no certainty there. There's, there's nothing there. We have a, a process in place. And I, I think when something doesn't work well with this process, we can, it, I, I think we need more public involvement, absolutely more public involvement. Uh, if you would be open to, if you would say right now that you're open to having more discussion about this, then I think that there's some things that we can do. One of them is to remand it back to PNC and ask for the public hearing to be in that formal situation where people can attend and there can be conversation about it. I mean, an alternative is, is for us to vote no on this. You know, and, and I, it seems as if we're hesitant to do that uh, because I, I think you've got a lot of neighbors here who um, might be willing to work with you if you are willing to work with them. We've, we've been willing to work with them throughout the process. We just didn't have any discussion until, you know, here at the 11th hour. Right, so it sounds like we just need to facilitate some discussion. And, and to do that in a, in a formal way, I think would be beneficial. Other than, other than there being some kind of indefinite to it, I would rather it be definite in some way. So we can either remand that back to P and Z, is that, if, that is a, um, if that is a way that would be beneficial to the neighbors, or go back and, and have another public meeting. Chris, I'm looking at you as P and Z director. Tell us what you think might be the best directive. Well, Councilmember Carlot, certainly remanding the item back to a public hearing with planning and zoning committee, that is one of the options in your, in your purview. You could certainly do that. Um, but in having another, um, you know, according to our ordinance, we could only notify people within a 600-foot radius. Mm -hmm. So word of mouth would have to um, invite to have others. There's also a sign posted and so forth. There was a big sign on the property. Correct. Okay. It's, it's unfortunate that the neighborhood didn't attend. Although sometimes um, that happens, and right. so they are attending now, and I, I don't want to dismiss that by any way, shape, or form. I think, I think it's valuable. We want public involvement in right. everything that we do, and so here we have it. We sure don't want to dismiss it. So I think we should find another way to facilitate it. Are, are you amending the motion 
for two public here two public meetings instead to remit it back to PZ? Um, I am. What I am doing is asking for advice on that from our planning and zoning director. And so, Chris, should we? Is it best to, in your experience, send it back to PNZ for a formal hearing or to put it in, as another neighborhood meeting? Well, a, a, uh, remanding it back to Planning and Zoning Commission, that basically affords everyone a three-minute time frame to issue formal comments. Sometimes a neighborhood meeting involves more of an informal atmosphere where you could, you know, there's, there's discussion that can, that can occur outside of a three-minute time frame. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that's a little more helpful. Okay. Um, and so having that information now, I would like to ask the council member for that district what he believes would be best for his community. Um, if there's another public meeting, then does it, does it go back to zoning as well, or can it come back to us directly? Councilor Ames, if, there's a, if the directive is to have another neighborhood meeting, that meeting would occur, and then we would bring the results of that meeting back to council. Okay, yes, that, that's what I, I prefer at, at this point. A community meeting? A yeah, true public that? meeting. Two. One or two? Because your original motion was for two. Two? Did I say two? Yes, yes you said two. Public, I don't I don't think public Wait, meetings, maybe. I, yeah. I've got a good idea here. Why don't you withdraw your motion, and you second it, and then you can sculpt a new motion. Withdraw. Okay, you withdraw. Second. You have to, okay, now... Go ahead and make a motion, <laughs> rather than get us all confused. I, I move that uh, there be a, I think I used the word broader, broader public meeting. And if our um, planning group can only send to that 600 yards, uh, I can work with you to uh, have a broader notification of, of the citizens in, in my district. And we can plan a location in a time that will be, will draw a large number of people. And you told me there's some people that like this. Well, I'd like to see them at that public meeting a as well. And may maybe you know them and you can invite them. And um, it, it, I said indefinitely, but I really meant contingent on there being a public meeting. And then it can come back. Did you want to try to set a time frame, like within a month for the meeting? Uh, I'll set a time frame of uh, two months. Okay. Chris, you had something? Yeah, Mary Council, just as a point of clarity, if, if the item was remanded back to the Planning and Zoning Commission, at that point, then we are constrained with our ordinance to only, at a minimum, require 600-foot notification. Now, if the council wants to direct the applicant to have a neighborhood meeting, then certainly they can direct the applicant to, to expand the radius. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, the motion is to have a neighborhood meeting and that Mr. Ames will help find a location, a time, and get the word out to a broader audience within yeah. two months. Within two months, right. And then it can come back to council if, if D.R. Horton right. so wishes. Right. Now, do I have a second for that? Second. Okay, it's been moved and second. Questions or comments? The motion is to delay action on this. Within two months, the developer needs to hold a, a larger public meeting and he will be assisted in terms of location and the volume of invitations that are sent out right please vote clerk will record the vote unanimous thank you very much mm -hmm. 20 our budget transfer economic analysis peoria sports park project Thank you. Scott White, our uh, Economic Development Services Director, will uh, introduce this item. And just a note uh, uh, for Council, obviously we're having some technical difficulty with our monitors. Um, staff are working to try to correct it, but uh, it, you may have to look up to the screen uh, if we can't get this fixed tonight. On your fix-it list, add sound? Pardon? Yes. Yeah, we're working on all those things. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the matter before you uh, tonight is consideration of a funding appropriation for a consulting engagement with Ernst & Young. Their purpose and scope is to review for the Peoria Sports Park Redevelopment Project in the uh, Entertainment District the financing and uh, 
I got a little loud. The financing package of the developer. As you may recall from prior study session conversations, um, the developer has been tasked with assembling a package of information that explains all the fiscal and economic benefits of the project. This action is for uh, us to retain the consulting services of Ernst & Young uh, that followed the normal request for proposals process uh, for them to review as our agent that package and evaluate and identify the true fiscal impacts, meaning revenue generation from the project, as well as the indirect and direct economic benefits of the project so that that information then can come back to council in study session and we can better evaluate uh, the impacts of that project uh, for the city. So this action is for the funding to enable that consulting engagement to occur. Our target is to be in a position to have that study session um, once the uh, consultant concludes their review in the uh, May timeframe. Yeah. Questions, comments? Seeing none, this is 20R, Budget Transfer, Economic Analysis, Peoria Sports Park Project. Can I have a motion? Moved by Ms. Carlett, seconded by Mr. Katana. Last chance for question or comments. Seeing none, please vote. We will record the vote. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Next is 21R, Exclusive Negotiating Agreement, Emerald Yard, LLC, Rovi Industrial Park Development, Northern Avenue between 75th and 83rd Avenues. Um, that's um, Scott uh, as well. Excuse me. Great, thank you. Uh, this item is the extension to the exclusive negotiating agreement that we have with the Rovi family. Uh, as you may recall, uh, we are working closely with the Rovi family for the development of a uh, rail supported industrial park. Um, that ENA uh, terminated in February and based on new negotiations with the, the Roby family, we want to re-engage in that exclusive negotiating agreement um, for the purpose of uh, further work uh, in evaluating a uh, engineering solution to 75th Avenue um, as well as completion of an application to the Arizona Corporation Commission for an actual rail crossing across 75th Avenue. Um, what we completed in terms of the prior exclusive negotiating agreement period, um, we completed a design survey incorporating existing as-built preliminary engineering for the railroad crossing at 75th Avenue and a master site plan of the industrial park. Uh, so that's the work that we did under the prior ENA. Uh, we now have an articulated scope of work under the new ENA as we move closer towards um, identifying what this industrial uh, park can look like, and more importantly at this point, what that rail crossing across 75th Avenue will look like. Uh, so that concludes my report. I'll be happy to try to answer any questions you might have. Okay, Mr. Rivero. Thank you, Mayor. When do you see, or if you had a timetable, this uh, application going in front of the Corporation Commission? We, uh, it's, our, it's our intention to be in a position to bring the ACA application forward within the one-year term of the ENA extension. In order for us to do that, and obviously we'd want to do that sooner than later, we have to identify a, an engineering solution to 75th Avenue, meaning that there's a considerable SRP water lateral on the west side of 75th that we want to avoid if lane expansion is necessary. We want to see if it's necessary, A, B, can we extend 75th Avenue to the east and avoid that water lateral. Uh, that's part of the scope of this ENA extension is to evaluate that condition and potential solution that then will lead towards the final um, ACA application. Okay. So you see uh, the city or the Robies uh, going before the ACA in about a year? Or sooner. Or sooner? Yes. Okay. And, uh, Lastly, how long do you see this um, negotiating between the city and the Rovies going on? Right now, I would characterize our engagement as in the pre-development, meaning that we're trying to work through some of the site development issues. Um, I believe that if we can uh, accomplish the two points of this new ENA, meaning the 75th Avenue Engineering and the ACA application, 
um, that should be clarity enough for us then to start talking about deal points for a project. So I would say with, within a one year time, if we're successful with this scope, uh, we should be talking deal points, would Thank be my best estimates. Okay. Thank you, Mr. White. Other questions? Mr. Ames? And we're just talking about ex extending the period, right? There are no other changes. Uh, yes, this is to extend the term for an additional year to articulate specific deliverables within that term. Um, and um, the city's, uh, as part of this, we identified as part of the budget supplemental um, that we discussed as part of the EDS budget of, um, I believe the number was uh, uh, $20,000 to assist in the pre-design uh, and development um, of the 75th Avenue. So this ENA is to extend the term one year to articulate the scope of work that both parties agreed to perform within that one year. And uh, since it's a partnership, the city has uh, $20,000 to assist in those design services. That would be 50-50 with the Rovies. So we're going into it together cost-wise. And that was the original uh, negotiation? Yes. Okay, thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay, this is 21. Oh, could I have a motion? So I'll move. I'll second. Moved by Mr. Rivero, second by Mr. Edwards. This is 21R, exclusive negotiating agreement. Emerald Yard, LLC, Rovi Industrial Park Development, Northern Avenue between 75th and 83rd Avenues. Please vote. The clerk will record your votes. Thank you. It's unanimous. Next is 22R, exclusive negotiating agreement, Co Copper Cactus Distillery, Old Town, Peoria. And Scott has this one also. Well, we're real, really excited about this one too. Um, we, this is a Capra, uh, Copper Cactus Distillery um, is a, an entity that is interested in our old fire station number one um, on 8307 West Washington Street as a potential site for their new business um, in the crafting of uh, unique distilled spirits. Um, so I'd like to introduce uh, Matt Bingham who is president of uh, Copper Cactus Distillery, who is here tonight. The purpose of this exclusive negotiating agreement is for us to formalize our relationship and to um, drill down more clearly on what are the deal points going forward for us to have that use in the old fire station. Uh, so that uh, is an, an exciting prospect for our old town. And so uh, with that, i uh, be happy to try and answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, before I go into specifics about the agenda item, uh, I want to thank you, Mr. White, for staying on top of this project. I know that uh, the city council, the six council members and the mayor, we have a uh, million ideas in regards to economic development from big to small, from the north to the south, and specifically in downtown. So I want to thank you for staying on top of this one. I had an opportunity to meet uh, Mr. Bingham um, over a year ago. We toured the old fire station and uh, look forward to the negotiations and I look forward to, forward to uh, opening day uh, of, of a new business in the downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Mr. Ames. Yeah, may, maybe I just missed uh, the reference, but uh, when we're going to do a microbrewery or is this the same? Uh, the microbrewery uh, use uh, didn't pan out. Um, that didn't and pan out, so okay, I'm right, there was one. Correct, okay. that didn't pan out, and uh, fortunately, um, Copper Cactus uh, saw a vision and uh, is interested in the, in the site. But they're both the same location? Correct. Okay, thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay, could I have a motion? So moved, I'll second. Moved by Mr. Rivero, second by Mr. Edwards. This is 22R. Exclusive negotiating agreement, Co Copper Cactus Distillery, Old Town Peoria, please vote. The clerk will record the vote. It is unanimous, thank you very much. Next is the call of the public on non-agenda items. I have no items. Reports from the city manager. Uh, just a couple of very brief uh, presentations and uh, John Sefton will uh, provide both of those. Thank you, Carl. 
Good evening, Mayor and Council. I just wanted to take a real quick moment to uh, highlight last Saturday's event, the Peoria Arts and Cultural Festival. Went off uh, without a hitch. We had a great set of partners, including the Peoria Unified School District, the Historical Society, the Women's Club, Theater Works, West Valley Art Museum, the Peoria Education Foundation, and Larry H. Miller Toyota and Dodge as major sponsors. Students from PSD exhibited artwork, performed dance, routines, choir band programs, also were playing throughout the entire day. The community center was rededicated with great big scissors, right, Tony? <laughs> uh, it was a great, great rededication with a new facelift for the community center. Visitors were also able to watch pottery being made throughout the, the day. They participated in a 5K run with over 230 new registrants this year. So great, great opportunity with the 5K run. There was a family bike ride. We had culinary treats. Uh, they took, many people took a wagon ride around Old Town and a stroll through the art gallery. So many different students had the art gallery exposed there too. We also had an opportunity for our environmental design assigned contest. Uh, Mike Bittner, our supervisor, demonstrated a great opportunity for how the arts can help, arts activities can help to actually educate the community. With over 125 submissions and a handful of winners, it was a great opportunity there. Upcoming, we're throwing a party for the planet. The entire month of April, we've got all kinds of things going on. From a river and trails cleanup on April 20th, volunteers, we're gonna focus on the North New River, uh, volunteers will meet at Uncle Sam's restaurant and we'll uh, expect gloves and hard work because there's a lot to clean up out of the river. So a great opportunity for folks to come out and enjoy some fun. And we're also going to do a green screen film festival throughout uh, beginning April 20th, May and into June. I will get a chance for the community to see earth, oceans and the Lorax. Great opportunities for folks to come out and play. As well, we'll have an Arbor Day celebration on April 27th, 9 a.m. here at City Hall. We'll do some tree planting. And throughout the month of April, we'll have city-sponsored activities, including a bulk trash cleanup, neighborhood pride projects, household hazardous waste collection, as well as uh, what else? all kinds of other stuff that I just talked about. If you've got to get rid of any uh, prescription drugs, we've also got the opportunity for you to do that. And with that, I'll conclude. Thank you very much. Very good. Thanks, John. With, done with flair. That's, done that's with flair. Um, and the, uh, the only other item I have under my report is uh, the monthly report from Tammy Shreve regarding uh, items uh, going through your policy subcommittees. That's all. Thank you. Next reports from the City Council. Mr. Leone. Thank you, Mayor. I got a few things I had attended uh, since March. The first one is the uh, Diamond Club Volunteer uh, dinner we had at the Broadway Theater. Uh, you know, the Diamond Club uh, Volunteers, what they, they call them, the Red Shirts, do a lot of good work for the city of Peoria. They're there every day, as you see. We had two uh, captains left after 20 years. There's only two left and all the rest of God knows where he went, but they weren't around anymore. So we had a great time, and it's uh, always good to see the volunteers come in, and all the money that we get goes to uh, different organizations. So uh, the Diamond Club does a real great job, and if you want to uh, be a volunteer, come on down and march, and you can uh, put your name in and be a volunteer and get to watch all the games. Uh, let me see, where am I here? Yeah, on uh, the 10th, the Dolly Sanchez Easter egg hunt, that was also great. I don't know how many people we had there. It's probably what, 10, 15,000, John? 9, huh? 9, That's great. And it, it's, always a good, it's always a good program, and uh, a lot of people come down, and kids love the eggs and the Easter bunny. So uh, if you miss it this year, I'm sure we'll be back next year. We'll come back 
Every year, unless it's raining, and even then, sometimes we'll have it open. Uh, the other thing I had, and I was hoping I can get how many people showed up. We had a meeting on April the 2nd about Northern Parkway, and we had over 100 people, maybe 102. I was hoping Dan, <coughs> I mean, I'm sorry, Dan, I was hoping Andy Granger could get me the list of how many people showed up. <clears throat> but, but there's quite a few people there, and uh, we just had a, a lot of people that, that was upset what was going on, because if you really know the whole story, you know, and they're going to start blocking up all these streets, <clears throat> and some, some divisions, only one way in and one way out. So uh, anyway, I just want to say that we had a, a large meeting and a good meeting, and uh, I hope we have another meeting, because <clears throat> this is important to the people in the area. I did want to, I also wanted to mention that on Saturday we had, like John said, we had the festival, and it was just great. I don't, somebody said we had about 13,000, I don't know, John, 14,000, but I did want to say that Tony did a great job making his speeches at the community center and at Osuna Park, and I, I didn't think he could talk that much, but he did. But it was just great. Uh, at the fun uh, 5K run, I blew the horn, and I blew the horn for the 5K run, the bicycle run, and the one mile run, and the chief was standing beside me, and after I blew the horn three times, he walked away holding his ears. So I told him, I said, the next time you don't stand beside me, I want to blow that horn. We did have a, a great, great event that day. We had a lot of people coming, coming and going, the community center was full with people. They had dancers and singers. I was over at the uh, theater works, and I watched all the singers, the choirs. Uh, about f I left about 5 o'clock, and Tony and I was at the uh, Old Main. <clears throat> but I left at 5 o'clock, and as I left, <clears throat> there were still a lot of people there. So it was just a great event, and that's what, that's what it's all about in Peoria. All these events, like John says, we got more coming up, <clears throat> and I want to congratulate John on the great job he did and all the volunteers that worked so hard putting that thing together. And uh, I, I don't think I could have done it. I, well, I know I could have done it, but it was just great, John, and your volunteers did a great job, and you can thank them for me. And uh, also, Bo taking those pictures. He's a professional photographer, I guess, but... He takes great pictures. Well, that's, that's all I got. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless America. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Carla. A lot of things going on in Peoria. Um, I just want to call attention to one, and that was an event that was held today at Trilogy in Vistancia. Uh, this is their seventh annual Food for Kids event. And um, today they had over 150 volunteers there to help package nutritional meals to help feed kids. Uh, the 2013 goal was to raise $18,000 to package 120,000 120, meals. As of late this afternoon, they packaged over 100,000 of them. I, I mean, that's just, that's amazing. 50% of the meals are donated to food banks, and the other 50% go to specific areas in distress. And um, the Peoria firefighters were out there. They were help doing a lot of heavy lifting, and um, they, they go out every year. It's, it's just remarkable what they're able to accomplish. So I just want everyone to know that that goes on out there, and... Um, like I say, that's their seventh annual. It'll be happening every year. So next year when I put out a, a notice, everyone will be invited to go help participate in Trilogy. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Redwood. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a lot of things going on last month, but in the essence of time, I'll just bring up uh, one item on April 4th. Um, I w participated in the uh, two 2013 Youth Government Day here at City Hall, and along with uh, Carlo, 
we had about uh, 60 kids uh, plus or minus uh, in the group and uh, we opened it up for question and answers with, uh, with John uh, being the moderator and we had some really good uh, questions and I think we had some pretty good answers for them. Um, and then after the uh, session was over, we, uh, they broke up into uh, groups and my group, I had four students uh, from four of local high schools who are interested in government and took them on a tour of City Hall, kind of showed them the different departments and then took them over to uh, the Peoria Sports Complex and got a rare opportunity uh, that they probably won't be able to do anytime soon is to actually go up on the roof of the sports complex. And we kind of took uh, took some maps and showed them conceptual drawings of what uh, the P83 development is all about and kind of got some, uh, some good comments and, and positive feedback from them. This, after all, is their city, and, and they need to have a value uh, say in what's going on. They're very excited about what's coming and en encourage them to take it back to their parents and just get them more involved. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Strange. In the light of time, uh, no comments this evening. Mr. Patan. Oh. Thank you, Mayor. Um, more than 20 years ago, Community Services Director J.P. Delamontane and I drove out <clears throat> to what was then known as the Peoria or the Greenway Sports Complex. It was a new site of the Peoria Sports Complex on a two-lane street, one lane going north, one lane going south, known as 83rd Avenue. We walked out to a remote place where there was a lonely stick in a big dirt field, and he told me that's where home plate was going to be. And I said, well, where's center field? I had to get an idea of which way the, which way the uh, stadium was going to, going to face. There was a lot of excitement around City Hall during those days. Some days there were rumors that we had signed the deal uh, with two teams. Other days there was no deal. Finally, the deal was signed in Peoria, and Peoria was on the map as the first city in the country to sign a two-team deal. The sports complex became so much more than just the sports venue. Over the years, it held numerous events such as the Easter egg hunt, Christmas pageants, car shows, RV shows, headlining entertainers, 4th of July fireworks, the great Michael Jordan playing left field, Garth Brooks signing with the Padres for one game so he could get one major league at bat. Police and fire events, health fairs, tons of things for the kids to do always. You can even give the mayor a haircut. <laughs> a lot of memories uh, during those last 20 years. And now, under the capable hands of John Sefton, we're in the forefront again uh, as the first city to sign two teams for the next 20 years. It's gonna bring two new complexes to the Padres and the Mariners and a complete facelift for the sports complex. And now we're looking at P83, a completely new opportunity and dynamic for the city uh, and for its citizens enhancing their uh, entertainment even further. This is, again, a really exciting uh, time for the city. I'd like to congratulate the city, the community services staff, along with the Diamond Club members who have been with us since the beginning for 20 years of successful, successful spring training games and so many more entertainment opportunities for not only Peorians, but from people all over the West Valley. And we should all be looking forward to the next 20 years. Lastly, I attended most of the same events that my colleagues attended, but I also had the opportunity to speak to the North, Northwest Valley Lions Club, a couple HOA meetings, and a couple of events honoring the Diamondback uh, members, and I, was also, I also attended the Easter egg hunt. Since the last council meeting, I had three unsolicited, unsolicited comments and a newspaper article thanking the staff for their professionalism and their willingness to go the extra mile to help citizens. When we, or at least me as a council member, go out to talk with citizens, I'm never really quite sure what type of comments I'm gonna hear. And it's always very rewarding for me to hear such positive comments about our staff, but for as long as I can remember, that's always been the culture of this city, and it continues to be the culture of the city. It is one of the reasons cities, citizens enjoy living in Peoria, and it is surely one of the reasons that a city of over 156,000 people still has a feeling as a city with small town values. Congratulations to the staff, and keep up the great work. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Thank you, Mayor. I want to start by uh, thanking our staff uh, in the Community Services Department for a job well done this past Saturday. 
I want to thank uh, John Sefton, and I also want to thank uh, Brenda Ranke for, their, for her assistance throughout that process. I also had the opportunity to throw out the first pitch with Councilmember Leone this Saturday at Murphy Park. And in regards to Murphy Park, I also want to thank uh, John Sefton, our city manager and staff, for uh, uh, installing those lights as quickly as possible. I know that uh, the Little League team is in, enjoying uh, the lights. Uh, they're able to see clearly at night, so I want to thank you for that. And lastly, I also did have an opportunity to participate in the Youth Government Day, and uh, th those are, are, are times that I'm never going to forget about because they're the fun, fun times. That's when I get to enjoy the council at the most when I'm able to get back to um, our community. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to be missing the next uh, council meeting. I will be in Washington, D.C. as a part of a recruitment effort by the GPEC, which is the Greater Phoenix Economic Council. Uh, they do it every two years, so I will miss the next one. However, I want to ask you all on the 27th of April, come on out and give me a haircut. And again, I want to invite all the council members to join me. With that, we're adjourned. <laughs>